watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Journeys with Jeff. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? We've got a studio audience today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. Today is going to be a fun, a fun journey uh, with uh, my guest, Mr. Charlie Hayden. He's a comedian, a magician. Uh, in fact, he was the head magician at, uh, at Foxwoods. He has appeared in Las Vegas, Nevada, Atlantic City, and all over the United States. He, is a, he was a systems programmer also for 34 years at uh, Northeast Utilities, and he's here to tell us about his journey. Charlie, it's good, to, good to have you. How are you? Pleasure. Yep. Looking forward to it. Let's, uh, let's talk about Ch Charlie Hayden. Where where were you born? I was born. My well, my father was uh, in the uh, service. He was in, uh, in the army, and uh, during the R and R during the Korean War, um, he went to Japan and met my mother. And uh, it was a year later. My uh, they got married. My brother was born there. Uh, two years later, I was born there. And then we basically migrated. You know, the United States. Eventually, he was in the uh, service for uh, you know for quite a while. Where did you land? Back in, did you land in Connecticut? Yeah, yeah, well, we ended up in California, then Kansas, and then we ended in New York, and we ended up in Connecticut, mostly Bridgeport and Milford area, um, you know, when I was about six, seven, and eight. And what were those childhood years like for you? It, it was great, except my father was always gone. He was in a service, and then um, he ended up taking off. <laughs> so I, I was left with eight brothers and sisters. Uh, since I was eight years old, and we ended up all in uh, foster homes and orphanage. Uh, I was in an orphanage in Karamo for uh, three years, uh, um, so four, four years actually. And then I lived in a foster home in Karamo and uh, went to Karamo High School. Went to Karamo High? Yeah. And you were living in a foster home at that point? No, at the, t at the time I was in high school, I was uh, in a children's home uh, in Karamo. Were you fortunate enough? Do you feel that you were fortunate enough, despite the misfortune, uh, the, do, were you were you in the hands of people who were nurturing and gave you the yeah, kind of love yeah. and discipline that you yes. that you needed? I I, <laughs> I had a pretty good life there. I had a, I was really good in sports, and uh, I had a uh, <clears throat> director who was really in, he played Triple A baseball, and I, I learned a lot of sports through him. And um, so I was yeah for the most part I'd say uh, it was nice. I was kicked out when I was 16 years old fighting with a counselor, but <laughs> I ended up in a foster home. You were kicked out of where? <laughs> out of the orphanage for fighting with a counselor and, um, you know, protecting, standing up for a kid. <laughs> so, but uh, I ended up in a foster home at Cromwell. A friend of mine that uh, went to Cromwell High School, they took me in. They had a large family too, and I, I was there for three years. Well, all these years later, or after that, did you ever resume any contact with your biological parents at all? Oh, well, yep. Yeah, well, my mother, I always kind of stayed close with. She had nervous breakdown because all the kids, you know, were separated from her. So um, I stayed in contact with her, and we never knew where her father was. And then my sister ended up um, working for an attorney, and uh, contacted my father, and we kind of had a reunion 35 years later. Uh, I wasn't really happy about it, but, you know, but um, yeah, all in all, it was, uh, I had a pretty good Pretty good life. Pretty good life. I can't. I can't complain. Well, after high school, you went to uh, you know, went to high school. Yep. And what happened after high school? Was there any college involved? Yeah. Or? Well, I wanted to go. I was under the state, uh, you know, award, so I could only. I couldn't. I wanted to go to NYU and be an actor. That's what I wanted to be, and play big, <laughs> play shortstop for the Yankees. I mean, every kid's a dream. <laughs> and um, but I got married when I was 18. I went to college for a year and a half. I got married when I was 18. And uh, we started a family very young. Um, 
but I was able to get into magic, and I, I ended up doing a little act. I did some acting, too, in some private um, uh, places, uh, uh, like in Farmington, and, and um, the other place was in Gorambia, I believe, a couple of plays I played in. But it was hard, because um, I always had two jobs. Um, for all my life, I had two jobs, so it was, it was tough to have other extracurricular activities. So, and yeah. you said, how old were you when you got married? 18. 18, yeah. 18, and, uh, and even though you were a young, immature, 18-year-old kid, <laughs> it's been what, how many years later now? Well, 47 years. And you're still married? Yes, I am to and, this. And you still love her? Oh, more than anything in the world. More than anything in the world. Wow. And you have how many kids? Uh, four kids. Wow. Yeah, two boys, two girls, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, how, and so, how you, 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 well, you wound up as a career uh, with with uh, Northeast Utilities mm -hmm. as a systems programmer. Right. What? <clears throat> how did you get prepared for that? Uh, actually, I worked up the ranks. I started out um, getting a job in a computer room, and then we took tests and stuff. And I just kept stepping up. Uh, uh, you know, going into comp you know, programming, and then you know, and it just kept graduating to a phone. I was a systems programmer uh, for most of my life there. And um, yeah, 34 years. So 30, 31 as an employee and three as consultant, you know, when I was there. And, and at the same time now, mm -hmm. you're married at 18, mm -hmm. you're raising four kids, mm -hmm. you're a systems programmer, right. and you're also as a side or a, another part of the, 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 your plate, as it were, you're uh, Comedian, entertainer, yeah, magician. Yeah, I was always a class clown. I was a class clown in high school. Uh, I was always a, a comedian, and I started out doing comedy. Uh, so I went to some comedy clubs, a couple in New York and stuff. And uh, very tough to break into comedy uh, back then. And they give you fifteen dollars to you know, do a gig all the way in New York. It's called gas money. And I was hoping to make it, but uh, it was tough because uh, with the two jobs. But I did find, uh, I always liked magic, and my wife found a uh, magic shop in Hartford. I went there, I bought my first trick, I went back, I was so excited, <laughs> it was closed. And I said, oh God, so it took another year before we found another magic shop in Rocky Hill. Uh, I went there, bought my next trick, and from there he, he saw the guy that was running the store, said I was, uh, I didn't do the trick like it was supposed to be, but he, he said I was very creative. He says, you should really get into magic, and, he invited me to some meetings, and I started going to the meetings. And <clears throat> I learned very quick because I was uh, always practicing everywhere I go. When I was driving, I'd be turning, you know, twirling coins in my hands and stuff like that. And I learned pretty quick. Then I started doing birthday parties, and then, uh, <clears throat> so, and, but I was always a comedian magician, so <clears throat> it was mostly uh, the stuff that I did was um, for adults. Adults, you know, I was an adult comedian, magician, and. Um, Made a good living, you know. Did 200 shows plus a year uh, while while having a full-time job. Wor 200 shows where, why, plus, while you're yeah. working? At Northeast Utility. Now, yeah. if you could go back, um, hypothetically, I love asking what if questions. If you could go back and you had a choice, you either forego the magic and the comedian, all that stuff, and you focus on being a systems programmer and being a cra you know, crackerjack, that's your that's your life's work, mm -hmm. or no system programmer, <laughs> but you make a career out of entertainment and show business, which would you have taken? Oh, I definitely would have taken uh, entertainment. Uh, if, if it paid, I would have done. The other one was a secure job, good job, good company, great benefits, but <clears throat> entertaining was always my love. I, I enjoyed it. There's nothing better than getting, uh, getting to a point in your life where I can walk into any place I can walk into a restaurant and there's a table right there, and I can just walk up to that table and start entertaining them and making them laugh and amaze them uh, with the magic and comedy. Because I, I do both of them probably the same. So, but I'd say my love was always uh, entertaining, always entertaining. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's any relationship <coughs> or any correlation between the, you know, a lot of people who have had sad experiences early on in life? Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes they they turn to, to comedy. I mean, you probably know better than I do. Mm -hmm. A lot of the famous comedians, if you go back and study mm -hmm. their lives, their mm -hmm. childhoods were probably some problematical difficulties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that that affected you? That that kind of 
in a way, was a salvation for you, the, the comedy, turning it into something that you can hum get humor out of and laugh about? Uh, well, I, I, I can't say. When I lived at, with my mother and my, and when I was younger, uh, my, mo my mother used to call me an anocan, and I didn't know what that was. I thought she was going to be calling me a rear end. That's what I thought it was going But what, <laughs> what I was with my family, I was happy uh, before we were split apart. Uh, she always called me anocan. And then I finally, after 35 years, I, I, I was talking to her, and I asked her, why did you, why'd you always call me anocan? And she said, oh, you were like Bob Hope, you funny guy, you laugh, everybody laugh. You know, so I realized she was calling me a comedian, and I thought she was calling me a butt. Oh, that's <laughs> All this, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So very quickly, I don't know how we're, we didn't, how we're fixed for time. How are we doing for time? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> About five minutes. Left. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Can you give me a, sorry about that, Jen. Sorry, old folks. I hope this, we can edit this out. Um, uh, you're, so anyway, I, w I wanted you to t t tell us, share with us some of the adventures in terms of your bad magician. You, you played it in Vegas. Yeah. You played, played in Atlantic Vegas City. about a half a dozen, uh, about seven, eight times. Yeah. Seven, eight times. And yeah. wh where, wh what, uh, <coughs> you, you were telling me before about, um, some of the acts that you worked oh, with, yeah. some of the people you worked with in show business. Mm -hmm. Who did, who did you work with? Uh, very fortunate. I, I was able to open up uh, for Bobby Vinton. Uh, now, back then when I opened for him, he wasn't a real big name, but he was still a name. Very, you know, everybody. The Drifters were a real good name. The Platters I got to open for. Uh, at Frankie Avalon, uh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. So I got to see the best of the best. And most of the guys were the nicest people I ever, um, you know, we sit in a green room waiting to go on. I would open for them. And um, uh, it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, you know. And you traveled with them, right? No, yeah. Usually it's a one-time show, you know, one-time show. Most of them I uh, open on the in the East Coast, but when I went to Vegas, most of the stuff it was uh, for corporate stuff. They would hire me to go in and entertain uh, their guests. Um, <clears throat> there'll be a company that sponsors a, a company or sells to a company, and then they have a party, and I would actually entertain for 100 to 200, sometimes thousands of people. Um, you know, so I do a lot of conventions like that, and, and Vegas was always a place where a lot of the companies, the corporate, would bring people in, you know, book them a hotel and, you know, entertain them. Well, we're going we're, we're gonna to cut away. We're going to entertain our, our uh, audience with, uh, um, with some magic tricks. You've been gracious enough to, mm -hmm. yep. to perform for us. Um, just, to, just to, as a final part of this first segment, mm -hmm. before we break away for a second to set everything up, um, uh, wh wh what, what have you, the life, the journey that you've had up till now, the ups and the downs and all the experiences you've had, what has life taught Charlie Hayden? What have you learned about life? What have you learned about Charlie Hayden? Well, the most important thing, I, I got the right person in my life, my wife, and um, that was the most important thing. But I think good family values, um, if everything's been very, I've been very fortunate in life. I've uh, been able to make uh, good money and travel. We're, my wife and I are avid travelers. Um, <clears throat> we're we're going to be taking an African trip in, in the fall, but we're ready to go to see Smoky Mountains. But I have a wish list, and we've been hitting them. I'm on page two of my wish list, so well. you know, we, we, we do a lot of traveling now. And that's what I do the magic still for, even though I'm retired. Okay, it so sounds like you're saying that love, to boil it down to one word, the love that we get to, mm. in life is is the, the best thing that we can get. Oh yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Charlie, thank you, we're, and uh, we're not, we're gonna cut away for a minute, set things up, and we will be right back. Welcome back, welcome back. We got the, everything all set up here, and uh, Charlie, take it away, dude. Well, gentlemen, welcome to my world, comedy magic. I'd like to start off before I do I just I needed an audience because we had a couple people and it's hard to do magic just one-on-one -on -one, so we invited a couple people I went to the soup kitchen and I got to pick up these guys here <laughs> I'm only really kidding they're friends of mine I told them I'd give them drugs if they came over and watch the show so anyways uh, I'm gonna start out with a simple trick you guys can do at home with a little you ever see one of these Dan uh, not really it's a little purse my wife's oh, got yes, the other half yes, of the money no, it's a guy thing okay <laughs> all I got to do is snap the fingers reach inside <laughs> I can produce my wand just like that now, before I start, i got to make sure you guys check out. I'm going to borrow everything. I'm going to borrow, like, your money, 
your wallet, your credit card. You know why? You know why? Uh, let me tell you why. I used to use my money. I used to use my wallet. You know what people used to say? Come on. I, I know there's a trick involved, but I swear to God, it's a regular wallet just like you guys have. Come on, buddy, laugh. I laughed at you when you walked in. Okay, let it go. Just let it go. Okay, good. Now, before I start, I got to do just one thing. We're going to do a little magic, okay? It's a bitch when you get older, I'll tell you. But anyway, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit of magic. And uh, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tricks that I used to do at this casino. This is one of my favorite tricks. Don't get excited. It's only a balloon. Uh, which end would you like me to blow up, Ken? Beginning, end, or middle? Middle. Middle. You want to change your mind or happy with the mind you have? Because <laughs> this guy, he's stuck with that mind for the rest of his life. I know you're not impressed, but here, you keep that. That's yours. Okay, you feel lucky tonight? That's yours, Jeff. Okay, who are you kidding me? Too damn big. <laughs> so everything is borrowed. It makes it more believable. So what I'm going to do right now is a simple trick you guys can do at home. And then I want to show it to you right now. It's a solid coin. Watch. Would you hold your hand out if you would? Solid coin, a solid hand. Watch. Just like that. Now that's solid. Open your hand. You're looking at Squeeze it tight. Make sure it's solid. Squeeze it tight. Okay, pass it over to that guy right over. Oh, not that hard. You give it to him. Pass it over to Dan. Dan, would you toss it right here if you would? Toss it right here. When I say now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm going to teach it how to walk. That's what you got to do is teach it how to walk. Then you got to teach it how to run. When it gets older, you got to teach it how to do a marathon. That's when you're ready for the trick. Are you ready for the trick, Jeff? Here it yeah. goes. Coin yeah. goes in my hand like this. I'm going to push it right here, and it's going to come out over here. I'll do that again a little slower. Watch carefully. I'm going to push it here. It comes out over here. Watch the coin's going to go up the sleeve across my manly chest. Watch. Up the sleeve across my manly chest. Down like this. Watch. Take that coin. Snap the fingers. The coin will seem to vanish just like this. You know where it goes? <laughs> it's a little wet. Okay, let me wipe that off. Okay, good. Now, I'm just going to take a... Watch it. Now, you guys seen a coin drop down. Dan, you've seen that, right? But have you ever seen a coin... Drop up? <laughs> you <Yeah>. probably haven't. <laughs> now I gotta take my wand. Oh, there's, oh, there's my wand. Watch. Watch. Watch the sleeves. Watch the eyes. Damn it, watch the magic. Right before your eyes. Here it goes. Coin gonna vanish just like that. It's gone. And for the finish, the big finish. Just like that. You're probably wondering where the other coin is. I, I, don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> watch. 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 Check your watch. Oh, it's in your watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not real good, okay? Uh, I'm not calling how, how do you do that, time. Bob? Your butt's, <laughs> your butt's in trouble there. For All right, guys. <laughs> now, I'm going to just show you something really simple. Now, you guys can actually do it home, okay? I know what you're thinking. God, this guy's not like good looking, but he's talented. You're not gay, are you? Because you look funny when I said that. I was only kidding. Okay, not that there's a bad thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, let me just show you a simple trick you could do at home. With a deck of cards. They say, they, I don't know, they just said it. You could tell the quality of a magician by the quality of the card trick he does. The better the trick, the greater the magic. <coughs> God, I hate when that happened. I'm seeing a cardiologist about that. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you select the card. If you would, Dan, would you do me a favor? Sure. Would you select the card? Select one, sure. Okay. Let me just give it a good shuffle before yep. I do All this right. miracle. God, I wish I was you guys watching this crap. It's really good. <laughs> I'm going to have you take one card, one card only. One preferably one. not a picture card, okay? Preferably not a picture card. Not a preferably not a picture card. Yeah, because okay. I'm going to have you sign it, and when you sign it, you can see it. Let me just okay. hold on to it. I have a, uh, this is a magic marker. Uh -huh. uh, you know why they call this a magic marker? This is a magic marker. <laughs> Deja vu, huh? It's also <laughs> a 3D pen. Look, 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 look. <laughs> now they call it a felt pen. Because I felt it. Okay, I want you to sign your card right in the middle of the face of that card, if you would. If it's okay if I see it's not that kind of a trick, right on the face of that card. Okay. Are you finished? Yes. I'm Japanese. <laughs> Are you getting any of this, Dan? Oh, no, sure. Japanese? Okay, good. No, because yeah. these guys aren't getting any of this. So don't worry about it. Okay, good. <laughs> May I have that card? Sure. Would you recognize that card if you ever saw that again, Dan? You'd recognize oh, yeah, it, would yeah, you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, some magicians use what they call sleight of hand. I think that's rude. I think it's crude. Above all, I think it's despicable. Absolutely <laughs> despicable. If you don't believe me, as Daffy, he feels the same way. What I'm going to do is take this card right here and place it right on the table right here. Put your hand on top of your card, if you would. And would you put your hand on top of his? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you in, you're enjoying this a little too no, much, okay? Right. <laughs> okay watch. I'm going to give it a certain cut. Now, if I cut it a certain way, just like that, 
I'm guaranteed to get a red card. If I did that right, <gasps> yeah, red card. Watch. Sign my name right here. Check. Ready? Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of the black hole in the universe? Yes. Okay. Watch. I need your help. Say, beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm trying, Captain. I don't know if I have enough power, but here goes. Boy, I just made it. If we went through that black hole, I should have your card right here. <laughs> now, that's only half the miracle. If that's my oh, come card, on. Cards, I expect a universal applause if you turn that over. Is that my card? Yes, come on, guys. Oh. Sorry. And you can keep that. That's, a, that's, your, that's my autograph right there. Oh, okay. You can have that. Souvenir. Yeah, yeah, pretty All good right. thing, huh? The better the trick. Just the audience, make sure the camera gets. Wow. Okay, good, yeah. good. You can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. You can touch it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Folks, you got to be here. You got to be here to really. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can sit down here and I'm going to, if we can just cut a little bit. Just you, you can see if you can cut. Can we cut for just a second? Yep. You know, I've seen this trick for 30 years and I still can't figure this stuff out. Yeah, I don't either. I've been doing it. I've been going to magic shows and everything. I still don't know how I do this crap. Okay, good. Gonna, are you going to stay seated for this one? Yes. Okay. And um, can you show me that that shot, that card, just so I can get a cutaway while we're waiting? Oh, uh, he's got it right there. Or just, yeah, I want to get it from deeper. Or no, because he oh. had it, right? Yeah, you have it. And he said, oh, show that up to the audience. Perfect, right there, Dan. Hold it, hold it right there. You can you can edit all this. Right? She's gonna okay good. She's gonna uh, edit what it all. What I'm about to show you guys is perhaps the oldest wait, documented. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I just, I bring it back. <clears throat> okay. What I'd like to show you guys is probably the oldest documented magic trick in history. Oh, oh uh, do you need to get back in the control room, um, Jen? Yeah. yeah hold. Let oh, her. Yeah, when she gets okay. back in the control room. Okay. Where's the area where you're gonna be for the? I'm whole gonna stay. I'm gonna stay here the whole time. <clears throat> okay. right, that took about a minute, so we got, let's say, six and a half minutes. Okay. All right, gentlemen, the, uh, what I'm going to show you is perhaps the oldest documented magic trick in history. It's called the famous, this was actually scribed in the crypt walls of the famous Egyptian pyramids. I'm not crap, and every time I want to do this, I always want to do this, I don't know why. But anyways, it's called the cups and ball trick. I want you to watch carefully because it's going to happen over and over again. Are you ready? You said, they said you could always tell a solid sterling silver cup by the high ping it gives off when tapped. Of course, these aren't sterling silver, but they are solid. You'll notice they're quite solid. Anyway, they are solid cups, and if you were to measure the inner depth of the cup like this, you know it's a lot deeper than the outside. And that allows it to do some weird crap, I'm telling you, watch. The ball goes inside the hand, and this is how it begins. Ball in the cup, ball in my cup. Is the ball in the cup or is it in my pocket? Okay, and you ready to go? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's start. Ready. Okay, what I'm going to do, it's very simple. This is, this is just a con, chicanery, deceit, lie. This, everything's, uh, this is a con, okay? We call it the Trump effect. And what I'm going to do is show you, I'm going to place <laughs> the ball inside. The ball goes in my pocket, and I'm going to ask you simply, is the ball in the cup? Or it's in my pocket. Now, what you say, if you say, oh, I think it's under the cup, I'm going to go, nope, it's in my pocket. If you say it's in my pocket, I'm going to go, nope, it's under the cup. Okay, let me just show you. Let me just show you something. It's all possible because there's a little trap door right here. I don't know if you can see that trap door. Let me show you how it works. Are you ready? Watch. Goes right through. I'll do it again. Watch. Watch. Did you see it? You didn't see it? Disappeared. <laughs> you weren't paying attention because there it goes. <laughs> now, the best part of this trick is this part. I'm going to tell you right now. This is the best part of the trick. I get a napkin right here or a clean uh, handkerchief, and if I just squeeze it, get 
little bowl, your little glass cup comes out of it. I keep it in here so it doesn't break, okay? Well, let me show you. Watch, watch, watch what happens. This is pretty neat. Watch. Watch. Let me do that again. <laughs> You're not going to believe it. Look. Oh. Oh, sometimes the ball gets so nervous, <laughs> it goes back inside. <laughs> it's just like this. Okay, let me do that again. Watch. The ball's going to go inside the cup. First, it goes in my pocket like this. If I snap the finger, you see the ball go underneath the cup, just like that. <laughs> You're not impressed. Watch. Oh, yes. <laughs> the ball goes inside <laughs> just like that. <laughs> you know, Gads. the reason why I was able to do this because I threw the knuckleball moving all over the place. You couldn't see it. If you didn't see that knuckleball, damn it, I know you didn't see that fastball. <laughs> it went that quick. It really did. It went that quick. Oh, would you be amazed? There was a third ball under here. Would you be amazed? Would you be amazed? And you lift that up. If you would just lift that up, if you would. No way. There's no. Come on. That's impossible. <laughs> would you? You'd be amazed, right? Just lift that up. No, right here. Oh, as I forgot to tell you, sometimes the ball gets really nervous and goes right back inside. <laughs> Little pocket just like that. And if you ask me, they don't even damn fit. They don't even fit. And that is the oldest documented magic tricks the cups and balls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bro. <laughs> okay, moving right along. I haven't done that trick in probably 15 years. Okay. I like to borrow a $100 bill. 50. 20. Hold it. 10. Hold it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sorry. I'm afraid if no, I give it to you, I may not get it back. <laughs> this is my double poker for money. you. It's my poker money. Because <laughs> I still got a little time left, right? One last trip. I knew you had money because you don't spend much on your clothes. I want you to examine that coin right there if you would. Can you grab that? Uh, just examine it. Anybody got a ring? Anybody got a ring on them? I can't get it. I don't think I can get mine on. Got a ring? Anybody? No, it's stuck on. I'll use it. You got, can I borrow your ring? Can you take I it off? Can't get it can't get it off. Okay, yeah, I'll use mine. It's all here. Okay, right. it's mine. I'm going to place this right here. Can you do me a favor? Bob, would you put your finger on it? Hold on. She's got to get back. Jen's got to get back. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Are you recording now? Okay, hold, okay hold so we got about, hold that right, right. What do we got about two more minutes right left, here. Jim? Put, no, just hold your finger right here. Okay, Jeff, do me a two more minutes. Watch. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. See what? that little corner? Bring your, oh, hold that corner right there. Watch. The coin's going to go inside that $100 bill. I want you to pull that corner right out here, Jeff. Pull that corner. Just pull it out. And lift it up. <laughs> here it is. Check it out. Make sure it's in there. Just make sure. And who gave me this $100 bill? Well, thank you. <laughs> no, anyway, <laughs> that's, yours, that, that's mine. And you can, and yeah, anyways, guys, we'll that's my world, magic and comedy. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed oh, it, guys. Like wow, it. thank you, thank you. Very nice. Wow. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Um, give us a call at the station, uh, WAC TV. Um, give us a call, or uh, those of you who are watching on Nutmeg or Hartford Public Access, you want to see Charlie come back and do some more tricks or any of the other guests uh, let us know we'd love to hear from you we always love to hear from you and if you want to share your story on journeys with Jeff give us a call thanks a lot and we will see you next time good night